Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cloud Summit 2018. It's our honor and privilege to have you here from far and wide. You know, one of the great things about coming to meetings like this and summits like this is the opportunity to speak with customers, interact with partners, and learn more about how we can build a more powerful business together. Today and tomorrow, we're going to help you explore the infinite potential of the cloud. What does that mean? Well, hopefully in the next 48 hours, we'll understand. Eight years in the building, 1,300 strong. This organization exists for the benefit of partners and for the people in this room. And we thank you. We talked to partners who came for as far as 36 hours to get here. Can you imagine flying from Australia to Argentina to Philadelphia to get to Boca? But what a great venue, you know? Beautiful weather, sunshine. The breeze was a little bit tough at times. I actually saw a cell phone for the first time ever go off the table, and it was the wind that moved it. That's kind of a little bit of a shocking thing in Florida. But great time for everybody. What are we investing in? We're investing in you. We're investing in the infinite potential that we all have together to help us all evolve and revolutionize our business. Not just for your business, or a small business, or a large business, but any business. And that's what our whole organization is about. So it's a privilege for me to be here. It's a privilege for me to thank you for your time, because time is the most valuable asset that we all have. And it was kind of interesting. I was grabbing a glass of water this morning, and one of my partners said, doesn't time go fast? It's already been a whole year. And we've got some many familiar faces in the room, new faces, you know, some partners that came as far as Malaysia to talk to, to share, to talk, laugh, and create more experiences together. Hmm. Cartoons in the morning. A dinosaur. Ooh. A unicorn. And a potential system crash. <laughs> it's okay. We'll ad lib, right? It happens every now and then. My great technical folks in the back will reboot it. So, a dinosaur, a unicorn, some clouds. What does this have to do with infinite potential? Anybody want to take a guess what it means? Somebody help me. Guesses? Why a dinosaur? Why a unicorn? Well, the interesting thing is a dinosaur was a very big lethargic animal. It ate a lot. It moved slow. It eventually, it eventually, we'll build the slide again one more time, we'll start again. He eventually got surpassed by the unicorn. Why did the unicorn surpass him? Because he believed in the promise of the cloud. Interesting thing about clouds, water comes from clouds, precipitation comes from clouds. All life begins with clouds. Businesses begin with the cloud now. And what happens if you don't adopt the cloud, if you don't work with a partner who gives you the opportunity to build a platform and work with a platform, unfortunately, this could happen to you. You could go extinct. So cloud is an extinction level event for many partners. It's also an extinction level event for many businesses. It's not about technology anymore. It's about being fast, faster than anybody else and more dynamic than any other partner in the industry. And that's how you and Ingram Micro are going to win together. You know, every organization needs to have a mathematical equation or an algorithm. This is a relatively interesting one. What does it mean? Anybody want to take a guess? Somebody help me. Somebody in the audience help me with a guess. Maybe Gustavo. Is Gustavo here from last night? Or Dow? Some of my partners that we had dinner with last evening? Well, it's the infinite potential of immediate access to an outcome which is fast and fluid. And that's important in today's business environment. Why? Because everything is getting faster. Just like my customer this morning said to me when I was grabbing a glass of water, how time flies. 
And what you may notice is that everything around us is evolving to faster and faster and faster. In fact, almost instant. In the past, we waited weeks or we waited months for things. Now, you can get them in an hour. And I'll give you an example. Yesterday evening, I was going through you know, my dialogue today, and I said to myself, you know, I'd really like to have an orange tie. Where do you get an orange tie in Boca Raton at 3.30 p.m. and get it delivered to your hotel room by 9 o'clock? You go online, you make a telephone call, you arrange for Postmates delivery, and five hours later, you have an orange tie. Can you imagine trying to get an orange tie in the past? You need an orange tie for Florida, you need it for the oranges, you need it to, to really inspire the morning. So you look at the past, the present, and the future. We've been here with you for over eight years. Every year, we get bigger. And in the past, we talked to you about the software assets we acquired. We talked about how we were building a better tool and a set of technologies for you to harness, to grow your businesses with us together. We built an organization of engineers that are around the globe to help our partners. And in the present, we evolved that. We add new services every single day to all of our platforms around the globe. We start evolving into infrastructure as a service. We start evolving into cybersecurity. We start evolving into IoT. All these new adjacencies, which are powered by a single customer experience designed for partners and customers around the globe. Looking ahead, what might Inger Micro bring you? Maybe we'll colonize Mars. Probably not, yeah? But we may help to reduce carbon footprint through people adopting technology. And we're going to talk about a couple of those today. How many people believe in this room that five years from now, money as we know it, currency paper, will no longer exist? Show of hands. How many of you actually spend real notes, currency, anymore? probably less than one-eighth of the room. How do you, the rest of you pay? Tap. Right, you tap with your phone. And if you're really technology progressive, like my colleague from Inger Micro, Scott Sherman, used this tool called Venmo. You transfer automatically. So all these things that we're used to doing, they're, they're starting to rapidly revolutionize. You know, in the past, people will come up here and they talk about this thing called disruption and transformation. Forget about disruption and transformation. You've got to talk about revolutions that are happening here. And we're here to make sure you harness that infinite potential. A couple of great technologies. I'm not going to go into them in detail today because I've got a group of speakers that are here that are much more qualified and educated to talk to you about them. But these technologies which all grow from the center of one environment called the cloud, are what are redefining the way we do business, the way we do commerce, and the way we interact with each other. Blockchain. Best probably known in the short term for this thing called Bitcoin. Right, there's a gentleman in here from Denmark. His name is Jakob. Um, if you do get to talk to Jakob, he's a Bitcoin miner. He actually taught me a lot about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Um, so I have to buy him a couple of bottles of wine later on. But that's not the only thing that powers or is powered by blockchain. What's more important are things like identity management. Can you imagine three years or four years from now when you own your own identity again? When it's distributed in a blockchain which is undestructible which can be accessed from anywhere in the world at any time. Imagine the infinite potential of what this means. And you, as technology partners, are the people that are going to start making those things happen. Think about supply chain, modernization of supply chain. Just a question, how many people in this room work with blockchain today? Anybody? A couple? I think my, my, good, my good friend from IBM, Bob Lord, will talk a little bit about blockchain. It is revolutionary. It's a technology that will change fundamentals of everything we do. And then we talked about currencies. The other really amazing thing that's going on is this thing called cognitive. 
artificial intelligence. Some people call it the lack of intelligence, yeah? Or you call it artificial intelligence. And I'll tell you an experience recently. So I travel quite a lot, frequently around the world, on planes, trains, automobiles, sometimes on a very powerful scooter that I have. Sometimes I crash on that scooter. It's kind of unpleasant at those points in time. But this artificial intelligence thing. I use this service called Teladoc. Anybody in the room use Teladoc? Okay, so Teladoc's quite, quite an interesting tool. It's actually being pushed by insurance companies. You get a small telemetry pack. The telemetry pack has a pulse ox indicator that goes on your finger. It has a blood pressure gauge. It has a temperature gauge. And what you do is you transmit your telemetry to a remote diagnostic center. What do you think that remote center does even before a doctor talks to you by FaceTime? What do you think happens even before he talks to you? Ali, you're a smart guy. You're going to help me with this. What happens? He'll predict the diagnosis. He'll look at that telemetry and that differential, and he'll tell you what the outcome is going to be. Now, the interesting thing is that artificial intelligence isn't smarter than people. It just has the sum of significantly more experiences than any of us can ever have, right? 170 million medical records that are digitized. Of course you're going to get a better differential because it can take a look at the different components and judge what's the outcome. A doctor, if they're lucky, they see maybe 20,000 patients in their life, and they're probably wrong 50% of the time. That's what's changing everything. Maybe people will live longer. And this amazing thing, which we call autonomous, it's everywhere. Now, the only interesting thing is, because you're technology professionals, and you've chosen a career that's growing faster than any other industry on the globe, and we're all in great demand, I don't think we have to worry about being replaced by a robot. And that's because we're the ones that build the robots. We build the technology. We build the platforms. We enable partners to transform. But this thing called autonomous, what really is it? Hmm. Is it about self-driving cars? Maybe. Is it about a technology that's born in the cloud, powered by a platform, that allow us to do things that are different? Don't worry about the self-driving car. Don't think about the self-driving car. Think about what it means and what the implications are of a self-driving vehicle. Now, Interestingly enough, anybody in the room a pilot? Anybody? Pilots don't fly planes. They haven't flown planes for a very, very long time. In fact, there are planes that can take off and land by themselves as well. So what's the pilot do? Sits there like us, watches a couple of movies maybe, has some dinner. Yeah. We're hoping he's not having a cocktail at 39,000 feet. What's he do? He's an operator. So self-driving cars are relatively interesting. The fact that you're going to get time back. Let me give you just one statistic, because I don't want to talk about statistics and, and numbers here. But I'm going to give you one statistic. Within five years, just the American population will gain 30 billion hours of productivity. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to need to watch a lot of videos in my car, right? Or I'm going to have to send a lot of emails from my car, no, Bill? What are you going to do with all this free time? You guys also know that, that less than 3.5% of the capacity of your automobile... How many people own a car in this room? I want to see all the smart people. Who owns a car? Anybody not own a car? How, actually, how many people own more than one car? Anybody own more than two cars? Okay, we got to meet after, afterwards outside this meeting. We can, we can talk about how we can create some optimization for you, okay? If you utilize a car for 45 minutes a day, it's about 3.5% plus or minus utilization. Do you think that's a good utilization ratio? It's not, right? So why do we buy cars? Because we have cars of what are called peak time. Look at cloud. What's cloud doing? It's allowing you to share resources during peaks and troughs, utilizing more capacity in a more efficient way. Now, what does that mean for the cars? Well, it means a lot of things. It has very little to do with your driving experience. 
It means a lot of things for a lot of industries. So here's a question for you. If all of a sudden you need 50% less cars on the road because cars are being occupied more often, okay, and they're called ETVs at that point in time, it's called an electronic transport vehicle, yeah? What do you think happens to parking garages? Kind of interesting, right? You've seen all those parking garages and those parking spots that you have everywhere? What do you think happens to those? They become available real estate. What do you think happens to the gas stations? You don't go to the gas station anymore. What do you think happens to the toll road? You don't have traffic congestion. Keep in mind, cities are passing rules and regulations now that will require the adoption of electric cars and autonomous cars because they will reduce pollution and they will reduce traffic dramatically. Now, the best thing is at the same time as it does that, there's great things for us. We become more productive. We have an other opportunity to sell into a new ecosystem that requires a platform. Where will all this lead? It's hard to say. You can make a lot of predictions, yeah? What it could do is autonomous could save 600,000 lives. Interesting. There's a lot of debate about whether or not a car should drive itself. I don't know, it probably drives better than I do. So I think I'd trust my car over time. People will get back more time. We'll become more productive. We'll become more efficient in everything we do around the globe. We will reduce carbon footprint. All by this very, very simple concept that's powered by a platform and the cloud. I'm happy to have some of my friends and some of my colleagues here to join us for the next two days. Sanjay Poonen from VMware, who will talk about their experiences. Bob Lord from IBM. Rodney Clark, my good friend from Microsoft. So Rodney and me were talking last night and it got into a really interesting conversation. We were actually gonna talk to you about quantum computing. And then we were very quickly told by, by Rodney's chief of staff, we're not allowed to actually do that. We'll save that for next year. But if, you're, if you clap loud enough when Rodney comes up, he may go off script and tell you a couple of things about quantum computing. Bill McDermott from SAP, Phil Willington from Workday, and a long list of my colleagues that will be here to help you through the next 48 hours journey, to help you realize the infinite potential of the platform for any business and any technology. These great little things. In the next 48 hours, I hope you experience them. I hope you look at them. I hope you talk to other customers and partners that have experience. So you and we can take the unicorn to the cloud and experience the infinite potential we all have together. And what I can tell you is that you'll never have a day without your partner, Ingram Micro, beside you. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic couple of days. Thank you again for your time, and thank you for your business.